hello everybody. I'm Sebastian Dan from Flanders Hydraulics Research in Belgium. I will talk today about the Belgian coastal dunes as they evolved through a continuous interaction between the climate change and the human activities. Most of the pictures and graphs in this presentation are realized by Glenn Stripstein and Rick Houthaus, but the other authors have significant contribution too. If it's to talk about the um, Belgian dunes, uh, they are highly influenced by human activities. And here is an example how infrastructure of transportation cuts the dune system into two parts along shore. So obviously this part on the, on the far side of the picture is detached in the dynamics term from the near shore system. In other parts, such as Ostende Beach, for instance, um, the dunes have been replaced with buildings uh, or other infrastructure. Still, they are uh, natural uh, dune systems in Belgium. So we analyze all of these types of dunes uh, to give an overview of their dynamics. The story of the Belgian dune starts uh, 10,000 years ago when uh, the Holocene starts and the weather uh, all of a sudden became much warmer. The ice was melting, so the sea level was rising very quick. A lot of sediments brought by the rivers from inland and by the glaciers and the portion of the Belgian shelf, which was dry at the time, start to be reworked by the waves and the currents into new shorelines and new coastal dune systems, maybe. Uh, and this rising of the sea uh, pushed back the shoreline towards the land until uh, the Middle Ages, when the shoreline it's, it took a shape similar to what we have today. The sea level is still rising nowadays, but the coastline is fixed, and uh, the human interventions prevent that the, uh, the retreat is a possibility in the future. How the coast was looking like in the Roman times, we think it's looking something like in this picture on the left side. So we have this uh, sandbars at the um, uh, shore line between uh, the sea and, and the inland. And behind of these uh, sandbars, it was a sort of inlet, marshy uh, environment. These sandbanks are the core of the nowadays uh, sand dunes and the part behind them, the tidal inlets, they have been dried and uh, through a continuous activity of, of the people with also of the natural uh, factors, uh, this, this became more or less a shoreline nowadays and, and the land behind it's, uh, was gained for agriculture. By the Middle Ages between 1000 and 1500 uh, after Christ, we had a rather um, stable shoreline position with some progradation or retreat, uh, but not at significant rates. And this can be seen also in this uh, uh, plot of different shorelines in the last 400 years. If we look at the blue lines, those are uh, the first maps, the first maps which are, were done with modern means. So it, uh, certainly, it is a certain degree of uncertainty, but also is due to the um, change in the Zwin tidal inlet, for instance, or uh, the mouth rivers or harbors. However, if you look at the warm colors, this is closer to our time in the last 300 years, and we can see uh, a tendency that, that the shoreline stays in the similar position with what we have today. Now, what I've done in the frame of this project to, to study the Belgian coastal dunes, uh, it will be presented from now on. And we look at the long-term morphodynamics of the coastal dunes in a macro tidal environment. If you look at this picture, you see that half of the coast doesn't have dunes. Uh, part of them were um, replaced by, by construction by people, but in some other parts they didn't exist because there were like uh, harbors or uh, other uh, geographical natural features. The Belgian coast is divided into 254 coastal sections, and we analyze 137 of them, which contains dunes more or less active. We also uh, plot here the dominant waves. This is the wave rows uh, based on the measurements done at Ostend Airport in the last 20 years. 
If we look at the height of the Belgian uh, dunes, we see that it's typically between 10 and 20 meters. Uh, TIAV, TIAV is the local datum for the mean sea level, right? Mean sea level. But in some parts, such as in the Brenton and the Hanaria, the dunes can go up to 30 meters. And this is due to the fact that the natural system of, of dunes is still connected to the near shore system. So they receive input of sand. There's also a white beach, which uh, stimulates the eolian transport. So these dunes are keep on receiving uh, sand from the near shore system. In the study time frame, which is 20 years between 2000 and 2019, about 72% of the coastal dunes were influenced by human activities. First of all, half of them are with brushwood fences, and this was done extensively with, uh, in combination with beach nourishment. So the beach was nourished, and then they built, especially in the four dunes, these brushwood, brushwood fences to stabilize and, and trap the sand, which was uh, blown by the wind from, from, from the beach. Then we have 11% of dune food protection walls or dikes in the area of the Pan and Newport that's close to the French border. Then we have another 11% uh, dunes which are affected by uh, various kinds of management work, such as beach scrapping, uh, beach houses, excavation works, and others. We also have 28% of natural occurrences happening along the Belgian coastal dunes. So 2% of the dunes are transformed into dune blowouts. Uh, at the uh, near area outside the Osten, Ost Dunkerque, and 80% of, of the dunes are experiencing spontaneous vegetation growth, regardless of human activities. Uh, and this uh, development of, of vegetation also stimulates the development of four dunes as embryo four dunes. The remaining 8% are affected by natural processes and sediment uh, erosion or deposition but they do not fall in any other of these categories. Now, the objective of our study was to examine the long-term changes in the four dune morphology along the 65 kilometers of macro tidal Belgian coast. And the focus on the dune was the, on the dune food dynamics, because normally we use this kind of diagram that you see on the right side of, of, of the picture. And, and, and this diagram is, is the division, the conventional division of, of different parts of, of the active beach at the Belgian coast. And these are used to, to calculate the volume for uh, different parts of the beach, such as dry beach, tidal beach, shore face, but also for the dunes. So at the moment, everything what is uh, above uh, 6.89 uh, meters TIAV is considered dune, and everything below is considered part of the active beach. We think that this kind of uh, convention is, is not uh, so realistic. So we done an investigation using topographic data collected by LiDAR system to see if that's a case or not. So first of all, we look at the, at the various places um, with different type of dune foot uh, um, configuration. What happens? Uh, with the volume of the dunes and the position of the uh, dune foot. So we see that if the shoreline uh, retreats or advance, it's not automatically a change, a loss or a gain in, in the, uh, in, in the uh, volume of the dune. Although the general trend is increase of the volume of the dune in time, and that's quite consistent, it's uh, uh, around six meters cubic meters per meter per year for in general for most of the dunes uh, we've seen that sometimes uh, they can lose or gain sand regardless the position of the shoreline by changing the profile uh, uh, and or the slope in this picture we see that actually uh, the embryo dune development uh, stores most of the sand of course also the one with brushwood fences and uh, even the one where beach houses are installed uh, the one which stores less sand is the one, of course, the dune foot protection wall. We know that this kind of method to protect the, the dunes is, is not the best. In terms of uh, relation between the cross shore position and the dune volume changes, we see that uh, we have four possible situations. So one, when we have no situation is that 
the shoreline is advanced and the volume of the dune decrease. That's, that's not possible. But we have the situation when the shoreline is retreat, retreating and also the uh, volume of the, the dunes decrease. And that's not very often. It's mostly for a uh, blowout. Uh, the dunes with, with, with blowout uh, areas. But most of the dunes are constantly gaining sand. Uh, some of them in combination with the, with the shoreline advance, mostly, that's mostly the case for the dunes with the embryo dunes, but also with fences. And we also have a gain of the volume of, of the dunes, even when the shoreline depletes, and that's especially case uh, the case for the dunes with the brushwood fences. While for those with the wall, we have a, a rather stability, slight increase of the volume. The way that we look at the dune foot position was to investigate uh, a, a profile in the middle of each coastal section and to we, we present in this picture three, three steps. First of all, is, is this uh, profiles, are these profiles presented? And then in the central panel, we can see uh, the high water level and the low water level and the inflection point where, where the, the slope change abruptly. So we, uh, based on this change in slope, we decided that there is the uh, dune foot position, the real dune foot position. Uh, we also use um, the derivative method with the threshold value. So the most seaward point larger than the threshold value is the position of the dune foot. In this, in this uh, graph, we have a, a dune foot elevation trend. We see consistent trend um, uh, to move, uh, to, to increase in, in elevation uh, is, is particularly clear for some, some cases as Newport when you have uh, dunes with, with a wall in front. And this, the explanation for this is the fact that the wall is buried in sand. And now the dunes are more active because they receive more easily sand from the near shore system. So they grow faster than the other dunes. However, most of them are uh, increasing in, in elevation. Uh, in general, but especially the, the dune foot, it's increasing at, at the rate of few centimeters per year. Here is a, is a graph showing the dune foot cross shore position, the trend for the position of the cross shore. So in other words, uh, how this dune foot, its point is moving towards the sea or towards the land. So if we have positive values, it moving, it's moving towards the sea, negative values is moving backwards towards the land. This is a more complex situation, uh, but we see a consistent uh, uh, rate of two meters, either that's approximately two meters, either that is towards the sea or towards the land. Uh, I would say that most of the dunes are moving towards the sea. Um, at least their dune foot, the dune foot uh, cross short trend position uh, for the study period is that they move more to the land, but some to the sea, but sometimes they move landwards. I come now with uh, some conclusions. First of all, the complex, the history of the Belgian coastal dunes is complex, it, and it's a result of a continuous interaction between nature and human activities. The dune food level at Belgian coast is relatively stable, located at 5.9 meter TAV, so one meter less than the currently used level at uh, plus 6.89 meters TAV. Uh, then the long-term dune foot position moves landward and seaward at the consistent rates about two meters per year with variation of, of about uh, half a meter. Most of the dunes are growing in time. Sediment is distributed in the dune profile by modification of the slope and or development of new seaward for dunes. Half of the Belgian dunes are developed by use of brushwood fences. They are used to stabilize dunes, a location with shoreline retreat, and to develop new for dunes. This is an effective method, but it's not always enough to, to keep uh, the shoreline position. Spontaneous vegetation growth in the form of embryo dunes is found seaward of old four dunes, a beach with widths larger than 300 meters. So in other words, for the spontaneous vegetation growth, we need quite a large beach to supply with sand and probably organic material. 
Other dune regions have natural dune bloods and or management works for the purpose of recreation. Dune foot protection walls are detrimental for the dune development, but occasionally they get buried by sand where, uh, and then the embryo dune development is possible. So the dunes rapidly uh, gain volume and height. The derivative method for the dune foot position determination is robust, but it depends of course on the special, reso special, special resolution of the topographical data. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask.